What is going on guys, Tim here, welcome back to Football Manager. So as promised, I left it, um, you can't tell, it actually looks probably exactly the same for you. Um, but it is, I don't know, seven hours after I recorded that last session, maybe a bit less than that. Uh, but um, there's a couple of comments and apparently 180 million and 50% of the sell-on is too much money. Uh, and I, I mean, I do agree, but the 50% sell-on doesn't really bother me too much because he's 23, right? By the time I've actually decided to sell him, he's going to be 30. Am I really going to play this save for another seven seasons? No. Um, I mean, maybe. I doubt it, though, to be fair, because uh, it's the 21st of August in real life right now. And FIFA comes out in less, literally in less than a month. And as soon as the demo drops, I would imagine... Now, I'll probably still play FM all the way up until about the 19th of September. The 19th, I think the, the 18th of September will be the last episode of this. Unless all of a sudden it gets a, a crazy good following and a big surge of, of views and likes and comments. Uh, I think it'll probably end on the 18th. If it does get that surge, then I'll move it to the second channel where we just talk about football. Link down below. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, but in in terms of, you know, with that in mind... I've got a I've got a feeling that we we make me we maybe just make this this purchase you know I, I don't know nah, we'll walk away you're right we'll walk away I think we may end up cancelling the transfer for Vagnomen as well because it doesn't I mean I don't really want to be selling him if I can't replace him and I can't replace him and I don't think he's going to kick up a fuss about not being able to move to Bournemouth. Well, that's the first thing to report. Mariano is set to sign for Arsenal. I mean, that was a very, very quick transfer, a uh, contract negotiation, sorry. Uh, Zinedine Zidane is the Arsenal manager, would you believe? Uh, however, the transfer may eventually rise to 70 million. So the board have agreed that 45 million will be added to the transfer budget. Uh, we are about to receive 51 up front. So they are keeping 6 million for themselves. I'm not going to have any complaints there because our transfer budget is actually more than the uh, the club overall balance at the moment anyway. We'll, um, we'll give a parting comment. I never do this, but um, I'll, I'll give him a little bit of a, a parting comment. Um, yeah, I'll just say you've been a fantastic servant. You're welcome back any time. Uh, thanks. Who knows what the future holds? There we go. So it looks like I'll be leaving. Yeah, just... All right, I'm off. Well, there we go. We've just bagged ourselves 70 million um, and in the process, Coleman has been granted a work permit. So there we go. Bang. Kingsley Coleman for 40 million. I mean, it's almost a like for like, but at the same time, not quite. So we've just received 45 for, for Mariano. We've spent 40 of it on Kingsley Coleman. We've now got five left over and we'll have another 30 to come in over time. Again, we're not going to get that because the club will probably siphon a bit off and keep some for themselves. But generally, I'm happy with that. Apparently, he doesn't speak English, which is maybe a concern. Probably should have checked that. But um, I'm I'm very, very happy about that. 83 million offer for Abdullah Torre. 62 million up front. That's mental. Uh, but I've got m nearly double, more than double, um offered for Markovic, in my opinion, Torre is a 120, 130 million pound player. So I, I'm going to, you know, if, if Madrid want to come in, Man United want to come back in and offer more money, feel free. Uh, but he ain't going for less than 120 million. That's for damn sure. Uh, another offer from Arsenal, this time for George Mia. I mean, they've literally offered three and a half million over what he's worth and 20% of the um, of the profit of the next sale, but they've not given me the option to to edit. I mean, had had they given me the option to edit, now like eighty million for him, and I would have accepted it. I would have bitten their hand off for for eighty million, but uh, unfortunately, that's not the case. I I don't know whether they'll come in again. None of these players are on the transfer list. Oh, this is interesting. This this really frustrates me because he is now going to kick up a fuss about moving to Arsenal, a team who have got Champions League football. I grant I grant you that, right? However, they finished fourth. Last season, we finished second. They finished third. Last season, before that even, they finished ninth. Um, I mean, saying that now, they've just signed Mariano. Uh, if they play him correctly, who knows? But um, it, it, it just frustrates me, man. It, it, not, not this 
individual situation, but this on FM annoys me. When you've finished above a club for so long, and then all of a sudden they come in with an offer, and they're still the bigger club, even though they're not actually better than you, it really annoys me. Because he thinks he's getting, he thinks he would be moving to a, be- a, a, a club doing better than we are, but it, it's not the case. Um, I mean, you know, if if he wants to go, I will let him go. Because I don't want to keep people here who don't want to be here. Um, I mean, I could say you must have known that I wasn't going to let you move to one of our rivals. You're going to have to accept that you won't be joining Arsenal. But then I've got a funny feeling he's going to kick off about that. And then that could upset the dressing room. And the last thing I want to do pre-season is to piss everybody off. So... I think what I'm going to do is to say, you know, um, the finances weren't right on the deal. Uh, I will let you go if they come back with a more reasonable offer. The problem is now he's going to ask me what is a reasonable offer. And I'm not going to agree with him, but I'm going to have to agree with him. So if I say if I say 60, I mean, I'll, you'll probably say no, that's too much. But I'll say 60. Uh, I'll be willing to accept offers if they meet this valuation. He's not happy. He reckons 52. Um, I'll say 55, what do you reckon? He thinks that's fair. So we've got a little bit of leeway there. If they come back in again, if we don't accept an offer of 55 million, uh, he'll kick off again. But I, I reckon I could probably squeeze maybe another 15, 20 on top of that. Another offer for Mia. Luckily, uh, this one is below the evaluation that we've agreed together. So I can just reject this. Had this been an offer I could edit, then 100% I would be negotiating and trying to get sort of 60, 70 million for him, maybe even 80. However, uh, I can't. So I'm just going to straight up reject that. He shouldn't complain. Uh, Lerola finally granted a work permit after the second time of asking. So he is our replacement right back for the soon to be released Bauer. That's great news. Good sign in there. A very strong sign in. Fingers crossed he's happy to sit on the bench and play second fiddle because I'm, I'm guessing he probably will do for for a long time maybe i should have bought a player who was sort of aging back end of his career happy to just sit there and pick up the checks but um i don't know very much like on the opposite side we've got baba and Telez, two players who could easily play a, a full season uh i'm kind of happy for both of them to sort of battle it out liverpool have spent 45 million on one player who was that uh, they bought Lissandro Martinez of Barcelona. I have no idea who this guy is. Marseille? No, Torino. So we've been asked to uh, give our expectations for the season. Uh, currently, our transfer budget is 98 million because we've already bought Coman and we bought that right back, but we did manage to sell Mariano, so it kind of levels out a little bit. It's basically what we were given at the beginning. Um, now, the FA Cup... I, I mean, I could say that I want to win it again because I kind of do. And we it goes up about 5 million. My wage budget goes up about 50 grand a week as well, which is kind of cool. Um, competition. I, I mean, qualifying for the Champions League gives us an extra 38 million and an extra 350,000 in wages. I, I mean, I, I want that. The board expect that anyway. They've already told me they expect Champions Cup. So I have to say to them, yeah, I'm happy with it. Um, reach the first knockout round in the Champions League. I'm going to leave it like that. I mean, wonder, I wonder what it goes at. What is it? 136? We go reach quarterfinal, 141. It's not worth it. Uh, reach the first knockout round is what I want. Um, the board don't care about the Community Shield. They don't care about the Carabao Cup. They care about the FA Cup. I'll just say reach semi-final because... Even going as a winner, you just get five million. It's just not worth the risk of, you know, getting on the the board's nerves. But telling them that we want to get champion, what do we get for winning? Nah, not that much more. But you do get a massive boost for qualifying for the Champions League. So we'll tell the board we're we're happy to go to go for that. We'll get more money to spend now, as well. One hundred and thirty six million and a whopping. Well, more or less, 400 grand a week to spend. Not worried about financial fair play. Ignore that. It always balances out as long as you stay within your budgets. Do you know something I hadn't even thought about? And I don't know why I hadn't thought about it. And I've not seen any comments regarding it either. There are two players about to come back in five days on loan or from loan. First one is Rodrigo Dorado, who, by the way... um, 
doesn't really fit in the system as much as it used to because we don't really play anchors anymore because we are more or less just that full sort of staggered system. We don't play the 4-3-3 like we used to in the Championship in the first couple of seasons in the Premier League. So I don't think he's really wanted. I'm, I'm going to try and sell him uh if i can anyway let me try and offer him out right now the reason he went out on loan in the first place was because i didn't want him to drop in value and he hasn't so if we can get anywhere near 28 million happy days we've just sold mariano and something that i completely forgot about was adam ida and oh my god has this kid come on a long way 21 years of age he's valued at 57 million i completely forgot he even existed he's been playing for dortmund and he's got 12 in 21 with three assists, playing a 7.5. He is going to come back and he is going to play. Uh, we don't need to sign anyone, unbelievably. Which is a little bit of a shame because I've got like 140 odd million in the, in the bank. And I don't really need to spend it. Maybe we should have gone for Trent. Because what else are we going to spend it on? You could say I'll oh, keep it, but for what? What am I keeping it for? Keeping it just for the club to become rich? I don't know. We've still got Jack Marriott, who has been playing for Sheffield United uh, all season. So he could be a backup to the backup, I guess. 18 goals in 40 games in the championship. I don't know what I was thinking when I first bought him. It was the first player that I could really sign that was of any quality. And I think I got a sudden you know, rush of blood to the head and we ended up picking him up. But, I mean, he's not terrible as a little backup. I don't know how happy he'll be to be backup, though. Uh, in terms of the... Um, I was looking for the uh, my new my new Spanish signing. Oh, we've got Eon Thomas as well. I forgot about him. We've got another uh, Ibrahim Decora, who, by the way, is actually coming on leaps and bounds. He's very weird. He's 20 years of age, though, so I don't know how far he'll progress. He's got key stats, but he has nothing in between. So he's kind of pointless really um eon thomas was one of those players who i th thought could maybe have made it i bought him for 500 pounds from tns right at the very beginning uh oh no maybe it wasn't at the very beginning it was the second season i've loaned him out to oldham he played 13 times loaned him out to mansfield he played 30 times he played 45 games for charlton in the championship where did charlton finish uh, I mean, they were still in the championship, so you never know. He might, he might have done wonders for them. Uh, stages, I want. Last season, Charlton, where did you finish? Uh, you know, 10 points above the relegation zone. Fairly comfortable, I would say. Well, you know, is what it is, I suppose. Um, bit of a waffle there. But Eon Thomas played in nearly every game for Charlton last year, by the sound of things. I'm thinking maybe one more season on loan. Hopefully he gets regular football. And then when he comes back, he could be he could be the man who plays central midfield automatic. Can he play central midfield automatic? Oh, not quite. Attack then? What about support? Yeah, he loves central midfield automatic. Uh, central mid midfield attack, which is fine because I want him to attack more than I do anything else. And he's, he's coming on really, really good. I, I don't know what his... Um, his future potential is. I know his current ability is not great, but one more season out on loan, and I think he could be the business. But uh, in terms of the team that's going to be playing the, the start of the season, I think it probably looks like this. So to end this episode off, I'm actually going to go into a pre-season game against Ludogorets because we're going to try and see where we're going wrong in this team. Um, then in the next episode, we'll play our first games of the season. I'm going to skip through the rest of the transfer window. Um, I, I find it incredibly difficult to uh to do a transfer window uh so it turns out because it's it's awkward i have um i have limited time to play the game in general so having to try and record a full uh transfer window is is awkward because i tend to do it in the middle of the night when everyone's asleep and now i'm trying to do it in the day and i just don't really have the time to do it so i think next transfer window ain't going to be like this um because I've tried to, you know, I've, I've shown you long extended bits, really, because I can't, I, I don't have the time to, to sort of sit here for hours and go trawl through everything and then come back and go back and so on and so forth. So um, this is our first friendly and I, I, I don't normally play friendlies. I tend to just go on holiday for them. But um, this is our first friendly of uh, the new campaign. Hopefully we can get everyone up to sort of match fitness. We're, we're not really going to find out in this game what position we really need to strengthen because I don't feel like we do now I, I I feel like it's 
I mean, going after a goalkeeper is all well and good, and I've, I've inquired about Edison and Allison. Those are the only really two keepers that I could see that were a massive improvement over Butland. But they're going to just command massive transfer fees, and I just don't think it's worth it. Um, maybe I go after a youngster and hope that over the next two or three seasons, maybe he develops into something that's better than Butland. I don't know. But, you know, we'll see. Um this game, I expect to just go one way, really. It's just going to be one-way traffic. I have no idea how good Ludogorets are. I know they're in, I think, challenging for European football, and maybe they're always in like the third qualifying round every year or something. I think uh, TNS have been drawn against them a couple of times. But um, I remember years ago, Liverpool played them in, in Europe. But um, obviously now it's it's just going to be a case of how many goals we can score. We're 2 nil up already. Abdullah Torre and Asensio on the score sheet. I, I looked at a left wing for loan, and I don't know if I left it in, but of course we have Ryan Kent as well as Asensio. I forgot about that. I forgot about Ryan Kent completely. Here's new signing. Coleman goes down under the challenge of Christoph, and we've won a penalty. Our penalty taker is... Asensio. Oh, there we go. He, we've, we've kept him on a penalties. Um, remember, I put him on penalties last day of the season uh, because he wasn't going to be able to play in the FA Cup final because he was cup tied and um, yeah I've apparently left him on penalties well I'll, you know, I'll leave him on there for a little while maybe change it when we get our first penalty of the new season or until I remember to do it myself but um, so far so good 25 minutes in we're just in control I didn't really expect anything less I'm really excited to get Adam Ida back Coleman plays it across comes back out to Douglas Louise tries to bang it West Ham style and um Jovelic has somehow missed from six yards, although apparently it was deflected and it goes out for a corner. And possibly another corner. This is going to be a long game. This is one of the reasons why I'm not a massive fan of playing friendlies, because they take so long, because most of the friendlies you play are either against teams who slap you silly when you are lower down because you want the money, or because you're a team that are going to slap people silly. It takes ages to get through it because of all the highlights. Well, I mean, we have just been absolutely dominant. We're knocking it back and forth as if... Look at it. We're like Barcelona right now. Except Barcelona are not as good as us. Torre has nodded it in. 28 minutes gone. We are 4-0 up. I, I, I'm a big fan of uh, Football Manager, as you know. But what I'm not a fan of... And I know we've not won the league yet or the Champions League. But what I'm not a massive fan of is getting the team so right that you don't want to spend any more money, you don't want to take anyone out. I don't feel like the team is as strong as it could be. However, I am happy with it the way it is now that we have Komen in there that makes up for Florian Tovan. We've got rid of Bauer and strengthened in that area. There's literally not one more signing I would like to make. The midfield is a little bit weak. We could maybe get a, I don't, I, I don't really want this guy, but I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, a Paul Pogba or maybe even a Fabinho. Fabinho actually is not a bad shout at all. Uh, he's a very good player and, and one that can play a Segundo Volante. So I wouldn't mind bringing someone like that in. Yeah, it probably would improve the situation in the midfield right now. But it would mean that Douglas Louise would probably never get played and he would have to leave the club. And there are a couple of other players in there who have only just joined us or maybe have been waiting for their turn. Alex Hunt and, and Gibbs White, two players who have been waiting. What a goal that is. Very patiently to get into the team. Now is their time to break through. They've got the potential. I'm not being sentimental. They are good enough to, to play regularly. However, because... I want instant success and we've got cash on the hip. I kind of want to just go and buy a, a ready-made central midfield player. But um, I'm not, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep a, an element of realism. We've, we've signed Coleman. We've got that right back in. I'm looking at goalkeepers. If the opportunity presents itself where Edison or Allison could be signed, I'm not going to shy away from it. But um, other than that, I think we're probably done for this window, providing we can keep hold of everyone. Um, in terms of replacing Mariano, Adam Ida does that. And I, I've kind of, I've planned for it without even thinking about it, you know. Got rid of Mariano and made room without even realising. There's Torre for a hat-trick. In the first half, we are 6-0 up. 
I, I didn't expect this much of a sort of a whitewash. I thought Ludogorets were kind of okay. I didn't think they were like, uh, you know, Vanarama quality side. I thought they were a little bit better than that. Maybe, you know, championship or bottom championship team. But then again, would we do this to a championship team? Who knows these days? I mean, Man City are drawing one all with Blackpool. To be fair, though, I mean, we've basically got our, our strongest team out there. Uh, we'll make subs in a minute. We didn't need to make them at half time. It's not that drastic at this stage. We're not Liverpool. Um, half, half time in a, any Liverpool preseason, they will literally swap 11 players. Ball comes in, comes out to Douglas Louise, West Ham style, and he misses. He's not playing amazingly well today. Let's take him off. I say West Ham style because he scored a cracking goal the other day. Uh, let's bring Thiago Meyer on. He can kind of play Valanta support more than attack what i really want is someone natural there that can play the segunda volanta uh sort of role but um yeah we've brought i want to kind of want to take kingsley coman off as well actually we'll bring Berardi on kingsley coman has done sod all today by the way not um not massively impressed by him so far so chances are Berardi could be the one to start the new Premier League season and Coleman could be playing second fiddle originally that was the plan but when we found Coleman I thought oh hang on maybe we've found a replacement for Berardi but I don't know we'll see they're both good players I suppose it really matters which one we end up playing um just about half an hour left uh, after this highlight we'll probably make another save Kolev with a diving retrieval of the ball kicks it long i'm guessing this is going to come straight back because he just he didn't aim that at anyone he has berardi on as a sub long ball into jovelic who i believe has scored his first goal of the day which is a little bit surprising for the premier league top goal scorer you're winning six nil and you, you take an hour to get on the score sheet alex hunt then for gibbs white and we're going to be playing in the system that we actually want to play in, not the one that we sort of wedged ourselves into. Uh, Liam Kelly I might bring on for Torre because we don't have um, another... The, the only other uh, shadow striker or in and around shadow striker that we have is Gibbs White. So if we... That's a potential problem, although that's where Liam Kelly comes in, I guess. He's a utility. I don't mind having him there for that purpose. Uh, I forgot about Leo Stulak as well, actually. Oh damn! Okay, well, you know it is what it is. Ryan Kent can come on now. We'll just, well now we'll, well now we'll do the subs. Why not? Uh, Baba for Alex Tellez. Uh, oh, I didn't bring on Melagoni. I can't really do much about that. I don't have another striker to bring on just yet. I won't bring on Ruddy because what's the point? Ah, screw it. Yes, bring on Ruddy. Uh, not that he's going to get a touch of the ball anyway. And I think that's probably it. I can't bring on Stulak. I can't bring on Melagoni. And I can't bring on Harrit. Players that are going to have to play a full 90 are going to be Vagnoman. Because we don't have our right back yet. Markovic. Because I don't have another centre back. And Jovelic. Not having another centre back might be a bit of a problem actually. I might have to go and find someone who's... Or loan someone in. That's what I like doing. Because they can't moan about first team football. We'll go and loan a centre back. I think that makes sense. Go and loan a, a decent centre-back. Nothing too crazy. Just someone who is capable of coming on and doing a small job for us. Um, oh, wow. We've conceded. Ruddy, what are you doing? That's embarrassing. Let's go and smash three more against them just to punish them for scoring. How dare you score against us? Um, yeah, we'll go, we'll go and loan a centre-back and... I think that's probably I think that's probably all we need. Uh, I don't think we need a, a replacement striker or shadow striker or anything because we've got Adam Ida coming back anyway. So and like I said, Gibbs White can play as a shadow striker replacement. I, I might even drop Gibbs White out of the team and drop him to the bench and, and sort of mould him into a um, Abdullah Torre replacement. Not replacement as in he'll be ahead of him playing, but I, I like you know a rotation then. Uh, since we made all those subs, the team just completely dropped off and nothing really happened. But um, yeah, that was kind of what was expected of us. Uh, so in tomorrow's episode, you will see a new centre back, albeit alone. Uh, hopefully the right back will be with us by then. And I doubt it, but you may see a new goalkeeper. But I mean, I'm I'm 90 to 95% sure 
that won't be the case. However, that's going to do it for today. If you have enjoyed today's episode, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for new, and until tomorrow, goodbye. Football Index. The game changed. Download the app now.